When Javier Pineda Rosas was 12 years old, he, his mom, and younger brother left Mexico to immigrate to Summit County, Colorado. They moved there to reunite with his father, who was working in hospitality and restaurants. The first thing that I noticed about Summit County in general was just the beauty, the natural beauty behind it. There was still snow on the peaks when we arrived. Despite the scenic views, Javier was homesick. At the beginning, I didn't want to be here. <laughs> uh, I had friends back in Mexico, I had my life going, and I can tell you now that this is home. There's no other way to put it. Summit County is about 70 miles west of Denver, high in the Rocky Mountains. For Javier, that natural beauty and a million things to do in the outdoors eventually charmed him. But it wasn't easy for his family to actually find a place to live. The first couple of months, they stayed in a friend's living room in the town of Breckenridge. It was a two-bedroom apartment. There was a total of eight people sharing that small apartment. When an apartment in the same complex opened up, Javier and his family lived there for about a year. Then they started moving around, a lot. Mostly because the rents kept going up. But there were other reasons too. It's very usual that when you have a lease here in some long-term lease here in Summit County, sometimes those housing uh, goes into short-term rentals or they get sold so it's really common to move around year by year. Javier never really unpacked. He just left most of his stuff in boxes. I felt like we were always on the go. <laughs> so it was never really a place to call home. Now, almost two decades later, the 29-year-old is still struggling to find his place to call home. And it sucks that even now, almost 30 years old, I don't have a stable living situation still. I still don't have access to buying or options to rent. And it has gotten really, really bad, like super bad. I'm Stephanie Daniel, and this is The Colorado Dream, Housing Wanted from KUNC News. From restaurant servers to police officers to local doctors, it's hard for people at nearly every income level to find housing in mountain resort communities. This series investigates the housing challenges facing residents, and perhaps most importantly, what community leaders are doing or not to find solutions. This is episode one, Mountain Dreamers. Home, it means different things to different people, from security to comfort to family. We say things like, home is where the heart is, and home is not a place, it's a feeling. But having a home of our own, it's the American dream, the white picket fence and two-car garage. At its core, a home is a place for shelter and security. It's where we might raise a family, build wealth, and be part of a community. But finding a home, whether buying it or renting it, is really hard, and it's getting harder, especially here in Colorado's mountain resort communities an outdoor enthusiast paradise in the playgrounds of the Rocky Mountains. This season on the Colorado Dream, we travel to three of the state's most popular mountain resort communities, Summit County, Route County, and Eagle County, where across the board, there simply isn't enough housing for the people who live there. We are so far behind in our housing needs. And rents have gone up and housing prices have gone up. Finding a house up here was extremely stressful. It's not just a poor person's problem or a rich person's problem. It's everyone's problem. 62% of my take home went to my rent. I shared a bedroom with uh, another girl for six months just to cut the cost. The housing challenges are growing. We have more and more short-term rentals popping up. One bedroom apartment, it was a studio apartment, it was a two bedroom, three bedroom. We didn't know and we didn't care. We needed a place to live. But so are the solutions. We view housing to be um, part of our infrastructure. I really want to live in a community where the teachers who are teaching my children also live. We couldn't really afford to live here and it was really the deed restricted condo that kept us here. Our story starts here in Summit County where a new survey taken by residents shows just how dire the housing situation has become. In the next five years, the county will need over 2,500 rental and for sale units at all price points to meet the housing demand. 
Javier and I hop off a chairlift halfway up the mountain at Arapaho Basin Ski Area, also known as a basin. It's late April 2023, and we're both decked out in all the necessities, the baggy ski pants and jackets, gloves, goggles, and helmets. The plan is to ride a short ways down to another lift that will take us to the top. But first, we strap our other boots into our snowboards. Javier has been snowboarding for about half his life. He learned during his sophomore year in high school. It gives him something to focus on, he says, and makes him feel zen. The feeling of, of feeling free. I never really written with music. I always have liked just the natural sounds or just hearing how the snow carves with the edges of the board. Many skiers and riders, myself included, can relate to this. Flying down the runs, being in the zone, the adrenaline rush. This is probably why so many people want to visit or live in the high country. There are over 30 ski areas scattered throughout Colorado's Rocky Mountains. In 2021, the ski industry generated over $1.2 billion and attracted millions of visitors. One of the top destinations is Summit County, home to A Basin and Keystone, Breckenridge, and Copper Mountain ski resorts. When the tourists come to ski and snowboard, they have lots of places to stay, from hotels to Airbnbs. But the same can't be said for the local workforce. In mountain communities, affordable housing affects all income levels. Margaret Bose is the executive director of the Colorado Association of Ski Towns. CAST is a membership organization of local governments that depend on tourism or the ski industry. And it was really formed in recognition that rural resort or mountain communities have unique issues and challenges compared to very rural or metro areas. The members hail from 29 Colorado communities, five counties, including Summit, Eagle, and Route, and local governments from the Mountain West, like Moab, Utah, Jackson, Wyoming, and Ketchum, Idaho. What the organization is all about is sharing information, sharing lessons learned, sharing ideas and programs. Some of the big issues are transportation and climate change. One of the biggest is housing. And some have even gone so far as to label it as a crisis. Margaret has lived in the mountains for over 30 years. Why she came is pretty typical. She moved here for the ski season and never left. Or, as the saying goes, came for the winter and stayed for the summer. I recall moving to Summit County in the early 90s, and it was difficult to find housing then. So it's always been an issue. In some ways, the very things that make Summit County and other mountain resort communities so compelling and attractive also contribute to its housing challenges. The large swaths of protected, forested terrain that people love to explore translate to small amounts of buildable land that usually come with high construction costs. Many of our communities are in valley bottoms and we're surrounded by federal land, so there's just very limited land left to build on and then very high real estate values. But in recent years, there have been some new pressures. One of the things she's talking about is the pandemic. It changed everything. People working remotely decided to leave their urban cities and buy a place in the mountains, which really drove up home prices. The summer of 2023 in Summit County, the median sale price hovered around a million dollars. Meanwhile, the median household income was less than $95,000. Another issue is the rapid growth in short-term rentals over the last decade. The number of those has increased exponentially, and that has reduced the inventory, the housing inventory available for the local workforce. Tamara Pogue is a Summit County Commissioner. The stakes, she says, could not be higher. For us, this really is about the ability of our community to exist into the future. Tourism is the largest industry in Summit County but the groomed ski slopes, restaurants, and hiking and biking trails wouldn't exist without the workers. If we can't find a way for our workforce to live locally or live in our surrounding communities, there will be no tourism industry to welcome folks to. It is really that simple. It literally takes a village to build affordable housing. This might surprise some people that part of that village are local employers. An increasing number of them are building workforce housing, including Copper Mountain Ski Resort, where Olivia Butramovich works. 
This is the entryway. We have a closet here to like, not necessarily gear storage, but like coat closet, which is super nice because I have a lot of coats. <laughs> the 25-year-old is showing me her 600 square foot furnished one bedroom apartment um, in Sky Chutes Landing, which Copper built on the resort for employees to live. Sky Chutes Landing mainly houses full-time, year-round members of Copper Mountain staff. The environmentally conscious complex has two three-story buildings with a total of 44 units, ranging from studios to three bedrooms. The first building opened in 2020, the second a year later. Pretty nice to live alone, especially in a mountain community where that's not super, super common. Olivia's lived here for a year and a half, and the rent is $9.50 a month, including utilities. A typical one bedroom in Summit County will cost more than double what she's paying now. Not everyone is this fortunate. Kelly Renew is Copper Mountain's Director of Employee Experience. So is there enough housing for the employees that work here? The answer is always no on that one, but we do provide housing for about 45% of our employees, which is a pretty staggering number. I don't know a whole lot of other employers that actually provide that much housing. During the peak winter season, Copper employs about 1,600 people. That number drops to about half during the summer. The resort has roughly 400 full-time employees. When I started here in 1999, housing was an issue. You know, we had long-term apartments that we were renting out to employees. And then in 2000, we actually purchased this facility, which is the Edge building. The Edge is primarily for seasonal staff who pay a reasonable daily rent that adds up to about $400 a month. The Edge used to be a Club Med hotel, one of those all-inclusive family resorts. Copper renovated it and turned it into a dormitory-style residence with single or double rooms, private bathrooms, and shared community spaces. We have everything from movie nights, wax nights. We have yoga every Monday and Wednesday in our theater. We have bands that do open mic nights. Every department at Copper is allocated rooms here and at Sky Shoots Landing for their staff. Meanwhile, there's also a third housing option for ski resort employees. They can buy deed-restricted condos and townhomes that cost below market rate. We don't see the housing market getting easier in the future, and so we are definitely working with the county, we're working with real estate brokers to see if there's other options in the future to potentially build, to potentially procure more employee housing. But there is a downside. If an employee is living at the edge or Sky Shoots Landing and gets another job, they have to move out. And if that same person actually owns a deed-restricted condo, they have to rent it to a Copper Mountain employee. Or if they sell it, the buyer must work at the ski resort or rent it to someone who does. Coming up, we learn more about Summit County's robust workforce housing efforts and how some residents might be missing out on these opportunities. We're not afraid and we're not as scared to talk to whoever we need to talk to, to demand a fair application process. That's after the break. The Colorado Dream Housing Wanted is supported by Berg Hill Greenleaf Rushidi, a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services to businesses and individuals throughout the Rocky Mountain region and beyond. BHGR is a company committed to Coloradans and initiatives that support a quality business environment with emphasis in diversity, equity, and inclusivity, workforce development, transportation access, and affordable housing. More at bhgrlaw.com. What does it mean to be in the know? Well, if you're living in Northern Colorado, just listen to In the Know Co. to discover more about what makes our community unique. I'm your host, Erin O'Toole. Together, we'll dig into important events, cultural identity, and stories from the people who live here. Join us for In the Know Co. Tuesday through Friday during Morning Edition on 91.5 KUNC. Or listen and subscribe at our website, KUNC.org, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Stephanie Daniel, and this is the Colorado Dream Housing Wanted from KUNC News. Summit County recently surveyed residents for a housing needs assessment, and it found it must increase the supply by thousands of rental and for sale units to meet the demand. Housing is a complicated issue. That's Jason Dietz, Summit County's housing director. 
the county has five strategies designed to increase the amount of affordable workforce housing, from new developments to updated housing codes. There's not a silver bullet to fix housing. It's more like silver buckshot, a lot of different pathways because there's a lot of different types of needs and a lot of different strategies to get there. Another strategy is called adaptive reuse. That's when a former hotel is converted into housing, like what Copper Mountain did with the Edge Building. By the summer of 2023, Summit County had converted three hotels into well over 100 rental units. One of them is the former Days Inn in the town of Silverthorne. It has 51 income-based apartments, from studios to three bedrooms, that range in rent from $900 to $2,300. Let's go back to the snowboarder, Javier Pineda Rosas, who we met earlier. He's a Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA recipient. That's the federal program that lets immigrants stay in the U.S. if they were brought here illegally by their parents when they were young. In 2019, Javier co-founded Mountain Dreamers, a nonprofit group based in Summit County that advocates for immigrants living in the region. It's about two weeks after our snowboarding adventure, and Javier's swapped his cold weather gear for a blue sweatshirt, shorts, and Converse high tops. He is at work at Mountain Dreamers, where he's now the program coordinator. He's recording a video in Spanish about the converted hotel I mentioned earlier. Hola a todos, este, nos acabamos de enterar que el hotel de Days Inn en Silverton va a comenzar a rentar de cámaras. Javier says, hello everyone, we just learned that the Days Inn in Silverthorne is going to start renting out rooms for long-term housing to local workers. It's very important to apply as soon as possible. The building is set to open soon, so he goes on to tell people, if they are interested, to send an email and get on the wait list. In the past, Spanish-speaking residents have had a hard time accessing workforce housing. This is problematic because Hispanics and Latinos make up at least 15% of Summit County's population. And about 8% of families speak a language other than English at home, according to a 2022 census estimate. But these groups are often undercounted. Some of the barriers to finding housing include information in English only, lack of technology that electronically uploads and sends documents, and not enough Spanish speakers to help residents navigate the county's housing process. Mountain Dreamers didn't want a repeat of these issues with the Days Inn units. So a couple months earlier, they met with county officials about these rentals. They asked to be notified before the application process started so they could inform their community. And it was through our understanding that they were supposed to let us know prior to the wait list to get people informed and be more equitable in the process, but it turns out that they completely blew us off. Javier and his co-worker, Yerka Platt, are not happy. They didn't want Spanish-speaking and immigrant residents to be at the back of the line to get a rental unit. So that was the upsetting thing, you know? We had this conversation two, three months ago to actually avoid this from happening, and it's actually happening. You know, and all I keep hearing is, oh, next time we'll do better, next time, and every time is the next time. So when is it gonna end? After Javier posted the video, the wait list more than doubled. Mountain Dreamers ended up corresponding with county officials again. Eventually, changes were made to make the process more equitable. Rather than first come, first serve, renters were chosen via lottery. Thankful and frustrated, so it's a mix of feelings. Thankful also that, you know, some people from our community are benefiting from it. But we're going to continue to fight fight, right? Advocate for equal processes, equal access. It's difficult to know how many Spanish-speaking residents live in the converted Days Inn Hotel, now called 580 Silverthorne Lane. However, over 65 percent of the people that applied filled out a Spanish-language application. One of the first residents to move in to 580 Silverthorne Lane is Adolfo Ramon Garcia Ramirez, he and his roommates live in a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment 
in the converted hotel. He's giving us a tour. La sala, eh, la cocina, donde tratamos siempre the living room and kitchen, where we always try to keep it as clean as possible. Adolfo is a former Nicaraguan political prisoner who was exiled from the Central American country in February 2023. The 55-year-old ended up in Summit County because of its growing Nicaraguan community. Before this apartment, he lived in a one-bedroom with six other people, which he was grateful for. But Adolfo loves living here. What I love most about this apartment is the privacy that each one of us has. Adolfo originally shared the apartment with another man from Nicaragua. Then they invited a couple from El Salvador to move in and take one of the bedrooms. Adolfo has gotten so much help since he moved to Summit County, he wants to pay it forward. Other people should have the same conditions and opportunities that I have had. As we just heard, when Adolfo first came to Summit County, he lived in a one-bedroom apartment with six other people. This form of housing insecurity is common, especially for new immigrants. And Yurka says many of them will cram into one hotel room. But finding a solution is tricky. If Mountain Dreamers complain to the hotel, Yurka believes the immigrants will just be kicked out. And now they're going to be houseless. So what do we do? Do we let this happen or continue to happen? Or do we say something? So it keeps happening. It happens we don't know what the solution for that is. The county's recent housing survey backs this up. Spanish-speaking residents reported significantly higher rates of overcrowding than English speakers, like people sleeping on a couch or the floor. They're also much more likely to live in a hotel, rent without a lease agreement, or be forced to move out of their homes. Yurka is the Advocacy Program Coordinator at Mountain Dreamers, and is getting a master's degree in social work at the University of Denver. I've established myself in Sami County for the last eight years, and I found a community here. So I feel very committed to my community. Part of her advocacy work at Mountain Dreamers is helping people secure housing. She says Spanish-speaking residents mainly hear about rental apartments via word of mouth. Online listings are often scams. The upfront cost for anyone to rent is another issue. In Summit County, it's common for people to pay the first and last month's rent and a security deposit. That's like $6,000, and it's often due before you sign a lease, get the keys, or even see the place. So that's why, you know, we're always telling our community, look out for a scam. Javier and I are stopped on one of the runs at A Basin so he can give me some pointers. He's a part-time snowboard instructor here. To improve your riding, be more mindful of putting weight on your front foot. He teaches free lessons to local immigrants, BIPOC, and Spanish-speaking residents as part of a new program he created at Mountain Dreamers. It's one of the ways he connects with people in the high country. The idea, though, is just create a community, like a, just using the outdoor activities as, as a medium. That's, that's the focus. Javier has been a community leader since Summit High School, where he was elected the first Hispanic student body president. He's put down a lot of roots in Summit County and wants to stay. He currently lives with his mom and three younger siblings in Dillon. But Javier is building a nest egg. He lived in Denver with his daughter until 2018 and then bought a property in the metro area to stay close to her when he relocated back to Summit County. He rents out a bedroom and lives there part-time. On the whole, it's cheaper to buy there than in Colorado's mountain resort communities. Eventually, we'd like to sell it and have enough for a down payment here because the Summit County is my home. On the next episode of the Colorado Dream Housing Wanted, we stay in Summit County and travel to the town of Breckenridge, where it recently built affordable housing for a group of essential workers. If you don't have housing for the critical folks that need to be up here to sustain a community, then you're going to have issues with sustaining a community. That's next time on The Colorado Dream. The Colorado Dream Housing Wanted is a production from KUNC News. 
It was written and reported by me, Stephanie Daniel. Editing by Sean Corcoran. The theme song was composed by Jason Patton. Michelle Rado sound designed and mixed the episode. Jennifer Coombs is the digital editor. Special thanks to Manuel Contreras, Ashley Jeffcoat, Ray Solomon, Jocelyn Mesa Miranda, Natalie Skoland, Scott Franz, Robin Vincent, Robert Leisure, and Mike Arnold. Tammy Turwelp is KUNC's president and CEO. To learn more about Summit County and Copper Mountain Ski Resort's workforce housing initiatives and Mountain Dreamers, and to see photos of the people included in this episode and other extras, go to KUNC.org slash Colorado Dream or check out the show notes for a link.